Welcome back students and a very good morning to all of you. Today we are going to start with the valuation and analysis of bonds with embedded options. Valuation and analysis of bonds with embedded options is based on the previous topic that is arbitrage free valuation of bonds. So we will begin with this topic keeping all those fundamentals fresh in our mind. I would be referring to the fixed income arbitrage free approach every now and then as we proceed with this reading. I intend to complete this reading in three lectures. Therefore, I have divided the learning outcomes of this reading in three parts. In this sitting, I would expect to complete from learning outcome one through learning outcome number six. So let's begin. The first learning outcome expects you to describe fixed income securities with embedded options. And the second learning outcome expects you to explain the relationships between the values of a callable or puttable bond, the underlying option free bond, that is the straight bond and the embedded option. A callable bond is a bond that includes an embedded call option. The call option is an issuer option, that is the right to exercise the option is at the discretion of the bond's issuer. The call provision allows the issuer to redeem the bond prior to its maturity. Early redemption usually happens when the issuer has the opportunity to replace a high coupon bond with another bond that has more favorable terms, typically when interest rates have fallen or when the issuer's credit quality has improved. A puttable bond is a bond that includes an embedded put option. The put option is an investor option. That is, the right to exercise the option is at the discretion of the bondholder. The put provision allows the bondholder to put back the bonds to the issuer prior to maturity, usually at par. This usually happens when interest rates have risen and high yielding bonds are available. What you need to remember in this is that one, callable bonds are issuer options, that is they favor the issuer. And second, they are exercised when the interest rates go down, that is when interest rates decrease. Puttable bonds are investor options, that is they favor the investor. And they are usually exercised when the interest rates go up. The value of a callable bond is usually less than the value of a straight bond. Because the callable bonds favor the issuer, issuer must give a discount on these bonds as compared to the straight bonds. And therefore, if you remove the value of the issuer's call option from a straight bond, you get the value of a callable bond. Talking about the value of puttable bond, because the put option favors an investor, so investors should have to pay extra to buy a puttable bond. Therefore, the value of a puttable bond is always more than that of a straight bond and it is more by the value of the put option to the investor. Therefore, what we have understood from the previous slide is that a callable bond is equivalent to a non-callable bond on which a call option has been written. The value of the embedded call option is equal to the value of the non-callable bond minus the value of the callable bond. On the same lines, a puttable bond is equivalent to an option-free bond for which a put option has been purchased. Obviously, investors are willing to pay a premium for a puttable bond and the value of this embedded put option is the value of a puttable bond minus the value of a non-puttable bond. Take for example, if you have to compute the value of a call option when value of a non-callable bond is $102.999 and the value of a callable bond is $102.238, then the value of the call option is the difference between these two values and it comes to $0.761. The next learning outcome expects you to describe how the arbitrage-free framework can be used to value a bond with embedded options. The basic process of valuing a bond with embedded option is very similar to the valuation process of an option-free bond which we went through in our previous reading. 
However, the value used at any node in a tree corresponding to a call date and beyond must be the lesser of the price at which the issuer will call the bond or the computed value of the bond if it is not called. The price at which the bond will be called is determined using a call rule. Let's take an example here. Say a 7% annual coupon bond has two years remaining to maturity. The interest rates are, the current rate is 4.5749%. If the interest rate were to move up, then the spot rate in the next period will be 7.1826%. And if the interest rate were to move down, then the spot rate would be 5.3210%. Now assume that the bond can be called in one year at $100. Then the issuer will call the bond if the computed bond price exceeds $100 one year from today. And this is the call rule. What you need to do here is you have to calculate the value of the callable bond today. So if you remember the interest rate tree, this is how we constructed the interest rate tree. We always start with the terminal value because we know that it is not going to change. The terminal value of this bond is $100 plus $7, which is its final coupon payment. And for all the three nodes, it is the same. Now let's see what happens when you discount it back. We have been given these interest rates and you have to discount this $107 and this $107 at the rate of 7.1826%. And when you do that, the average of it comes out to be $99.830. Now, when you discount these two boxes at the interest rate of 5.3210% and take an average of it, then the value comes to $101 spot 594. Now we know that the call rule is that the bond will be called if the price exceeds $100. Now this is reflected in these boxes in this completed binomial tree where the second line in the boxes at year one note is the lesser of either the call price or the computed value. So this second line will show either the call price or the computed value whichever is low. So in the first node, we know that the computed value is less than the call price of $100. So the second line will have this value. However, in the second node, we can see that $101 spot 594 is more than our call value of $100. Therefore, in the valuation process, we must take this into consideration rather than this price, rather than the calculated price. Let's see how we are going to calculate the value of the bond as on today. That is what is V0. V0 should be the average of two rates. The first one is what we get from the first node, 99.830. And it will be discounted at 4.5749%. And the other value that we are going to take is not $101 spot 5 as we would have done in the case of an option-free bond. Because this bond is a callable bond and its higher value is sealed at $100, we will take $100 as the value of the second note and we will discount it using the same interest rate. We also have to add the value of the coupon payment at this date. And when we do that, we get a value of $102 spot 238. So this is the value of the callable bond. Had this not been a callable bond, had this been a regular bond, then the value would have been the average of 99 spot 830 discounted at 4.5749% plus $101 spot 594 plus $7 and the $7 is the coupon, again discounted at 4.5749%. So this would have been the calculation in the case of a regular bond, a straight bond. However, this is not a straight bond. 
it is a callable bond so callable bond will be calculated using this formula please remember that in the lower note you have taken the value of dollar 100 which is the lower of either the call value or the calculated value the next learning outcome expects you to explain how interest rate volatility affects the value of a callable or a puttable bond. And again, I'm going to give an example of a callable bond. Like ordinary options, the value of an embedded call option, let's call it V-call, increases as interest rate volatility increases. Also, as volatility increases, the upside prices in the binomial tree will not rise above the call prices but the downside prices will fall that means the callable bond value v callable will fall as the volatility rises the first line of this para can be understood better if you recall the example on the previous slide when we talk about upside prices this is the lower node the upside price will come when the interest rate falls and at that time, the price is restricted to the ceiling of the call. Whereas when the interest rate rises and the price falls, then there is no downside to it. What you also need to know is that the arbitrage free value of a non-callable bond, which is a straight bond, will be unaffected by the increased volatility. Therefore, as volatility increases, the value of the call which is the difference between the callable and non-callable bond values will also increase. From the investor's perspective, increased volatility decreases the value of their callable bond. The issuer of the bond benefits maximum from increased volatility. The next learning outcome expects you to explain how changes in the level and shape of the yield curve affect the value of a callable or a puttable bond. Look at this graph carefully. This black curve is the convexity of the bond yield curve. It's an option-free bond. As interest rates decline and the bond yield falls, the value of a callable bond increases less rapidly than the value of a straight bond. You can see how the straight bond's value is going up. Therefore, callable bonds limit the upside potential for the investor. The put option, on the other hand, is considered a hedge against rising interest rates for the investors. As interest rates rise, the value of a straight bond declines much more rapidly. But this decline is partially offset by the increase in the value of the put options. So put bonds do not fall as much in value as an option-free bond would if the interest rates were to rise. The next learning outcome expects you to calculate the value of a callable or puttable bond from an interest rate tree. We know that a puttable bond gives the holder the right to sell the bond to the issuer at a predetermined price. Valuation procedure is the same for a callable bond except that cash flows are dictated by the put rule. Now take an example in which a two-year 7% coupon puttable bond that is puttable in one year at dollar hundred. Let's calculate its price. As in the case of pricing any other bond with the help of an interest rate tree, we will go by backward induction. And we know for sure that the terminal value of the bond is dollar hundred and the final coupon payment is dollar seven. So this will be the value for each of the nodes at the end of year two. Now you have to discount these two nodes using an interest rate of 7.1826% and you have to take an average of it, which will give you a value of $99.830. Same way, you must discount these two nodes at an interest rate of 5.3210% and when you take an average of it, you will get the value of $101.594. Now the second line in these nodes at year 1 represent the put rule. The put rule says if the value of the put bond declines below $100, then the holder can put up the bond to the issuer back for a payment of $100. Therefore, the value of the puttable bond can never effectively decline to less than $100. 
So this is the lower limit of the bond price. So therefore, we apply the put rule here and take the value of the bond at this node to be $100. Let's see what is happening in the second node. In the second node, the value of the bond is coming out to be $101, spot 594. So why should the bond holder want to put the bond for a value less than this? So at this stage, the value of the bond will be the higher value. And that is $101, spot 594. And then you discount these two values, $100 plus $7, that is the coupon payment at this node, and $101, spot 594, plus the coupon payment of $7, and discount these using the interest rate of 4.5749%. And when you take an average of it, you get the price of the bond to be $103, spot 081. If any one of you did not understand this, you can look at this slide a little more in detail to understand the calculation better. So this is the value of the upper node calculated and this is the value of the lower node calculated. You can see the interest rates that have been used to calculate these values. And finally, you will see that the value at time zero is calculated using a dollar hundred plus the coupon and the higher value of $101, spot 594 plus the coupon value. And these are both discounted at 4.5749% and you take an average of this to get the value of the bond as on today. So I hope this is clear to all. Now let's also see how the value of a put option can be calculated. Recall from one of the previous slides that the value of the put option is the value of the puttable bond minus the value of the non-puttable bond. In the previous example, you remember that we had calculated a value of $103, spot 0810 for the puttable bond. And if the value of the option-free bond is $102, spot 999, then we can simply calculate the value of the put option as a difference between these two values. And it comes to $0.082. Value of an option always increases if the volatility increases. Well, I would close today's lecture here. I would take you through the next learning outcomes in the next sitting. I hope you enjoyed it. Please take your time to revise what I taught you today before we move forward. Thank you very much.